Okay, I'm not that smart because I couldn't figure out how to keep my hat on, but please forgive me for that. Today, we are graduating approximately 900 STEM majors, science, technology, engineering, and math, and about 200 social science and humanities majors. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations to the graduates and particularly to your families. As a mother, I think my number one goal in that career was to get my children graduated from college, and I'm very happy to have at least one gaucho amongst them. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. The most important message I would like to leave with you today is that commencement is just that. It's a start of a journey. It is not the end. I'd like to give you some personal history to illustrate that journey. I was actually an economics and math major. But after spending time in the, yay, ha! But after spending time in the placement center, I saw there's a couple of those here actually, that's great. Perfect, ha! Uh, I spent time in the placement center during my junior year, and I know all of you probably have too. Um, and I was looking at what my career opportunities would be and at that point, I decided it would be best if I headed over to the engineering department and took some of those new computer science classes. I thought, with that under my belt, I'd be able to actually get a job that allowed me to stay here in Santa Barbara after I graduated. And I'm happy to say that that worked. My husband, on the other hand, he had a really good major from UCSB. He was an electrical engineering major. Yay! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, I'm not happy to see the women there, too, because there weren't any in his class. <laughs> um, so, but while he was in college, needing to pay his way through college, he decided to make sandals. Kind of odd, isn't it? Uh, he decided that for an interesting reason. His feet were so wide, he couldn't find any to buy off the shelf and he'd have to go over to the orthotic shoe company in order to find a pair of shoes to, to fit him. So he decided he'd make his own sandals, and then he'd make them for everyone else that would pay him as well. By the time he graduated, he was doing so well in the sandal business that he continued to make sandals and founded Deckers. How many of you know Deckers? Yay. <laughs> He claimed he made full use of his engineering talents by building equipment on the manufacturing floor because all the sandals were made here in Santa Barbara for many years to start with. But at that point, he needed to learn a lot more. He needed to learn business, he needed to learn marketing, and he had to do that all on the job while he was trying to build that company, Deckers. After I graduated, I actually got a job right away here at Raytheon in software development. And a few years later, Decker was growing quickly, and Carl convinced me to help him look for a computer system. Somehow, I got committed to help him with that, and then I realized that there was nothing available for small manufacturing companies, and that made me commit to actually develop a system for Deckers, but I did that by forming my own company because certainly I was never going to work directly for my boyfriend. <laughs> I too uh, found myself needing to learn a lot more than just computer science. I needed to learn new disciplines, particularly in manufacturing and business, and very importantly, how to go to the bank and ask for a loan and actually have them give me one. So need is the mother of invention. And I particularly like the words of the late Steve Jobs. Look around and see what the world doesn't know it needs yet and invent that. That's what you ought to do. So think about that. <laughs> but regardless of your major, what you end up doing in your career can take you in different directions. Be ready to chart your own way. As I look back at the world since I graduated nearly, well, I don't want to talk about that, but it was a while ago. Um, here are some things that were reality at the time. There was no individual voicemail. We had these little pink while you're out slips that people would write notes for us. We had no fax machines, something you may never even use, but they were important to us when they finally came out. But instead, we had snail mail. 
And then as we needed to communicate with our customers more quickly, particularly on an international basis, we rented a teletype machine. I hope most of you computer science majors were able to use paper punch machines because that's basically what it was, paper, paper tape. Uh, and it cost us $400 a month to rent that teletype machine, but a huge amount of money at the time and still pretty much is today. We had, unbelievable to my kids, we had no internet. Instead, we shopped at the mall, we scheduled rides by leaving notes on the USEN bulletin board and waiting by our phone in the evening for somebody to call to coordinate a ride. And we tracked packages by making also phone calls, which could be many and laborious. We had no personal computers. I think it was easy for me to learn computer science because I had a lot of time to think between those batch jobs that we used to create by typing on, on paper cards, on punch cards, and submitting uh, batches. By the time the batch finally came back, I'd already probably figured out half the mistakes that I made on the previous one, but then I'd have to correct those and do it again. But over the last 40 years, uh-oh, I think I told you how long it was since I graduated, uh, <laughs> we did see a lot of inventions, some very important inventions in cell phones, electric cars, solar energy, DNA testing, and 3D printers. I would have never have dreamed 40 years ago we would have had all these things. And I expect that many of you will be working in these areas. Perhaps autonomous cars, not individually owned, but shared. Think about the lack of, of parking that would, would create, or the help in creating parking spaces. What about the ability to modify DNA, your environment, and your microbiome? Hopefully this will lead to the many, uh, end of many diseases and cancers in our lifetime. What about working on home use of 3D printers? We actually have a 3D printer at home, and it is far from being home ready. It takes a lot of engineering to keep that 3D printer going. And the only thing I've got from it is a pair of earrings that my husband made, but they don't stay on my ears, so oh well. <laughs> but perhaps you might start on that working at some place like Amazon, uh, and then eventually get those 3D printers to work at home for the, for the wide consumer base. What if you need a new cell phone case, measuring cups, a doorstop? You can just go ahead and print them as easy as you can print a document today. Wouldn't that be great? But please do take care to figure out how to recycle all this plastic that you're using creating stuff. Maybe you can reprint with them. Perhaps, like me, you'll work on the connected world through the inter Internet of Things. Maybe you'll start with some very practical apps like finding misplaced keys, but you better hurry because I think that one will soon be a historical artifact. Maybe you'll work on the Internet of Things and intelligent car technologies, perhaps to figure out when your tire is about ready to blow and be able to stop and get it replaced at the right store who actually has it in stock at the right price, and they'll be ready to install it once you arrive. That would be a nice luxury to have. Perhaps you'll be working on solving our traffic problem, maybe right here in Santa Barbara. That would also be nice. Like many things, there's different ways to attack every problem. Uh, perhaps you'll look at that with the Internet of Things and perhaps integrating with adaptive cruise control to get rid of the lags between the car braking in front of you and in front of them and in front of them. But I just did read an article on Larry Page, and he's already working on flying cars. So maybe there's two companies that he's invested in. Wouldn't it be nice to have an autonomous flying car that just picked you up and dropped you off wherever you needed to go? No need to find a parking space. And best of all, no more parking tickets. I would really like that. <laughs> but since I couldn't even imagine the progress over the last 40 years that we would made, here's some things off the top of my head that I would really like your help with. I need a custom design knee to replace the one I screwed up skiing. I'd also like you to figure out how to replace it without having to cut me open. Maybe some stem cells would be great with that. I would really like a Star Trek uh, type transporter where I can leave Santa Barbara at 7 p.m. for a 7.30 dinner in Paris and home for bed. 
I definitely don't want to be a beta tester for that one. <laughs> but tell me before you do it, because I want to de-invest de my stock in uh, airlines and hotels, because they certainly will be history once that happens. I'd like you to work on diseases and cancers. I'd like to see them before I die in the history book under eradicated, joining smallpox that's there today. I'd like disagreements to be resolved over a conference table instead of a battlefield. Uh, the possibilities are limitless, so use your mind. Think about what you want to do and really do do it. When I thought to this weekend about what I would say to myself if I were your age again, and that would, advice would be to appreciate the moment. Throughout my career, I was always working to get to the next level, to get this project done so I can get on with this next important one, to, to be able to get this new prospect as a customer. If only I could do that, that would be great. I would finally be successful. But I never did feel successful because I was always looking to get to the next point, to the next level, as you would say, in gaming. Uh, but now I realize that it wasn't about getting to that point of success. It was the journey, and we need to realize and how to appreciate that journey because it is the journey. It's that journey of your life. It's your journey of your career, and let's learn to appreciate that. However, there will be low, po low points through our career, uh, the project that failed, the loss of a job, the prospect that went elsewhere. Uh, personally, I'll never forget uh, the time we were almost put out of business because that bank recalled our loan, decided they didn't want us as a customer anymore. It was hard to appreciate the journey at that particular point, but remember what? Things will, could get worse. So try to learn and move on, even if part of that journey is painful and it will have those pain points. But in closing, I'd be remiss not to ask for a favor. So here's my ask. Please look around and see where you can help. Perhaps it's mentoring a K-12 grader. Perhaps it's donating time or money to a community effort. Perhaps you can provide something on a national or even global basis. Your talents are needed in so many places. Take care of yourself, take care of your family, but also think about what you can do to help others in the world in general. Congratulations, Class 2016. Congratulations, parents and family, faculty, and everyone that helped you on this journey. I believe you'll find the efforts and sacrifices well worth it and go Gauchos. Thanks. Bye -bye.